Welcome back, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about OSINT or as it stands for Open Source Intelligence. Previously we talked about Open Source Intelligence. I have discussed uh, some use cases of Open Source Intelligence in previous videos. I'm gonna make sure I put them in the video cards and in the video description. So now in today's video we're also gonna talk about OSINT. I'm gonna make a summary about it and we're gonna take a case where we'll be analyzing a simple account to extract artifacts. Now, let's get back to OSINT. So, uh, where is the pen? Okay, so now let's first understand how to, what is the objective of open source intelligence? So your objective is to all the time, we are interested in building a persona, all right, about a target. So you're given, normally you will be given, um, let's say, account on one of the social media platforms, or sometimes you're given um, some nickname, and sometimes you will be given a real name. All right. Now let's first understand what is the objective of uh, what's the objective of OSINT in each one of these scenarios? So, when you are given an account in one of the social media platforms, most probably you will be required to find information about their activity and, of course, don't forget, you will also be required to find information about their real persona. Real persona includes real name, um, other information like um, surname, date of birth, city, whatever. Okay, so in a case where you were given a nickname, um, any nickname could work, could be an account handle. Um, so the nickname, when you're given a nickname, you will also be required, or most probably, the objective is to find the same information so we're gonna draw on to the account here so here also in the nickname case we want to find the activity and the real persona now when you're given a real name so in the real name case you are you don't need the real person right why because you have the real name all you have to find is actually the social accounts or let me say social accounts let's uh, yeah social accounts actually social accounts and sometimes <clears throat> the web activity the web activity includes everything they did on their social accounts and other accounts so real name investigations are conducted mostly by law enforcement but in our case as an analysis uh, 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 analyst uh, will give me an account mostly will be given an account or nickname and you will be uh, required to find that information about their activity and arrive at their person at the end so now where to find these information so OSINT information or the information that you find from OSINT can be found either from the clear web the clear web the clear web is uh, anything you can find using search engines or the dark web so these are publicly available sources so everything is legal here okay now the difference is in the clear web you can use search engines such as Google, right? But in Darknet, you will be required to um, use a special software to access um, websites, um, forums in their in the in the dark web. Mostly, you will use Tor. All right. Okay. Now let's switch to the practical side of this video and take a case where we will be analyzing or we were giving an account. Okay an account handle and we will be investigating the activity and arrive at the real persona 
the real person it could be as I said earlier name um, email date of birth all right so let's hop in so today's practical scenario is from advent of cyber 3 and it is day um, let's scroll up day 16 all right okay so we scroll down now what we're given here we're given a message in Russian that's your artifact okay if you take that and translate into English this is the message content translated into English and at the very end you will see the operator assigned to your case can be contacted as Grinch who 31 on all platforms so in this case you are given something close to be a nickname okay the nickname is Grinch who 31 but as you will find later this is not a nickname this is an account handle now we will start to use the available resources at our disposal firstly first and foremost we will use Google now the effective use of Google in information gathering and open source intelligence is mostly accomplished by using Google Docs I have a sheet uh, that contains some uh, most common used Google Docs and the explanations of each one of them you can find that by browsing to the channel membership and subscribing now the operator that I'm gonna use in this video is this one let me tell you what is this uh, it's all in text let me see where is that operator okay that is the operator I'm gonna use today so all in text معتصم حمدان عرس ايم ولا معتصم الكلب so all in text and I'm going to type the nickname I am given here Grinch 231 so what this will do actually it will find all of the pages it will return all of the pages where the Grinch who 31 is mentioned inside the page this will give you a comprehensive look on all of the pages that either could be an account uh, with the name Grinch who 31 or pages which actually mention this name which may lead you to resources such as accounts or personal pages so that's the use of all in text let's see here now the first result that, that came up is Grinch31 which is a reddit account now this is a reddit account um, mostly we are interested in finding information about the activity now you see only single post Google Trends for a Grinch in the past 24 hours if you click on that it's a post on try hack me subreddit and it's analyzing the trends of the <laughs> the word Grinch 31 <laughs> all right so mostly the reddit account will be of no use for us let's see here so we have a keybase account the keybase account reveals information such as a twitter handle if you click on that we see we have twitter accounts and also if you click on this one Christ master 331 this is also a github account and also lastly we have a bitcoin address if you click on the bitcoin address we see the uh, history of the changes that have been made before creating the bitcoin address and before claiming ownership of the twitter account and the github account okay let's see what we have else we have a Twitter account, but actually not in the name of Grinch 31. Rather, the Grinch 31 is mentioned somewhere uh, in the post of this account. Let's see that. Let's see where did the Grinch 31 come from in this account. We scroll down. Let's see. This account mentioned something about Grinch 31. Let's find out. Grinch. Uh, 
Ah, I couldn't find that. So where did this come from? Okay, so we have at. Let's take that and try if we can find an account with this handle. Aha, uh -huh, we have an account. So indeed you can find a Twitter account either by using the Google search or by uh, clicking on the link in the Keybase account. Now notice guys that the search result that we saw here it's actually a Twitter search result with to, to, uh, that relates to a different account. The account is Anastasio. It's not Grinch who 31 but since we use the operator all in text Google will return all of the results where the uh, nickname here or the search query here is mentioned somewhere inside the page. Although we couldn't find where actually Grinch 31 is mentioned inside this account and I'm not sure why Google returned this result. But it shed light on that actually there is an account with this handle which we were able to find. If you scroll down as you can see uh this is not uh try this is probably about the challenge itself not the username so you see all of the pages all of the results return pages where the grinch 31 is mentioned inside which would give you a comprehensive overview comprehensive um look uh, on uh, the uh nickname or the search query you used between the double codes in all in text all right so now let's let's see what we have until far so we have a twitter account we have a keybase account we have a, a github account and we have a reddit account so let's analyze the github account so while we are analyzing a github account in github we are interested in finding information about api keys email addresses tokens because mostly when people commit changes to their repositories they would sometimes they would forget api keys or tokens inside their commits or inside the code sometimes you would find sensitive information in the commits so mostly we're interested in finding as i said earlier the version the version history so if you go to christmas Taylor, we see a code here ransom.cpp if you click on the code you see here there is the bitcoin address in the code right so the code actually leaked the bitcoin address if you scroll down this is actually it's supposed to be the ransomware code but i guess um, it's not the part of the challenge to analyze the code so i'm going to skip the analysis but uh, most importantly to take uh, careful attention to the bitcoin address in here so these kind of values, hard-coded values, uh, can be found in the code itself, or you can find these hard-coded values in the version, in the commit history. So if you go back and you see there is one commit which tracks the changes that have been done on the code. So it's only one change, or really only one commit. Create ransomware.cpp. If you click on that. Uh, no, I clicked on the account itself. Click on that. We see these are the comments and these are the changes that have been done. So we see the address of the Bitcoin in here. Now if you go back to the other code, Chris Bash 3, if you click on the comments, we have four comments in here. Starting at this one, initial commit, docker file 3, 3.sh. Um, so you can go over these commits and see if you can find hard coded credentials. But for this challenge, you won't find any. The only thing that you will find is when you click on create 3.sh, you will find a date of the code information about the owner itself, which actually boils down to the objective of the OSINT. Our objective was to build a persona. Who is this person? We found their social accounts. We found much about their activity, but finally we want to know who they are. And luckily for us, we find that by looking at the code, and at the end we found that it is created by Don't Heath and Don't Heath when one at gmail.com. So this is the email and this is the name. Now by now, if you were following up with what I was explaining, you will find the answers to most of the questions in the challenge. Let's go over the answers, make sure everything is covered 
Okay, so what's the operator username? It's the Grinch with 31. What social media platform is the username associated with? So it is Twitter. Now, what's the cryptographic identifier associated with the operator? If you go to Keybase, and um, if you click on, uh, let's see. No, if, if you go to Twitter itself, and you see, go over the posts here, you see, uh, this is the key. Also, if you scroll down, let me click on the account. It's only one post. Refresh. Making sure there's only one post. Yeah, only one post. So this is so this is the uh, cryptographic identifier. I'll go back. What is the Bitcoin address of the operator? We saw it was this one. You can find that also by looking uh, at the GitHub commits here. What platform does the operator leak the Bitcoin address on? Now, the Bitcoin address was found in the Keybase and also in GitHub. But the answer here they're looking for is GitHub actually. What is the operator's personal email? Now, we found the personal email at the end of the Chris Bash tree code at the commit number three where they created the tree with sh. And it was Dante Heath 21 at Gmail, and the email was uh, the name was Dante Heath. So this is the email, and this is the real name. So that was for today, guys. That's one example of using OSINT. I'm gonna put the other videos which talk about OSINT in the video description, or or you can find them in the video cards. That was for today. I hope you enjoyed that, and see you in the next video.